How's it going, tribe? So today we're going to go over the pale prototype as well as the Kali prototype. All right, so I know you guys are gonna wanna see how these figures scale in your current collections. The decoration does slightly affect the how much you can lift it up. Looks like Lionel is a little bit taller if you can include his hair. Okay, the next question or comment said, I wish there was a little bit more height and variety of the figures. And I totally agree with you. A classified snake eyes. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and mm, I can almost guarantee that we're gonna miss something this week. There's too many teases. There's too many, oh, look for this, right around the corner. But like I say, at the end of every weekly, there's always next week, right? I know a lot of you know this, but I record these on Friday, midday, somewhere in there. Then I post on Patreon, and then I post on YouTube on Saturday. So if something happens later on Friday or Saturday morning, then <laughs> I always get comments of, you missed this. No, I didn't. They missed me. Mm, that's right, getting a bit big for my britches. So again, we'll swing around, <laughs> which is exactly what I'm gonna say here in about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Oh, yep. It's plunderlings again. You knew this was coming back around. And why wouldn't I talk about this? Their plunder long, plunder strong Kickstarter is in the home stretch. It has about seven days as I'm recording this. And while it's already funded, there's more stretch goals to go. Don't get me wrong, they're chopping away at them. But as they chop away, they're also revealing new ones. <laughs> and once we get higher and higher, they just get more wacky and wild. Unlocks since last week's update include the Muscle Crate, Nomad Poncho, and Feral 8-Ball. That means we're this close to unlocking the uh, Drenched Typhoon at 200,000. But because some of those tiers got knocked down, they're showing pictures of what were only silhouettes last week. The Iron Crate, exactly what we expected. Just some weapons to arm your plunderlongs, plunderlings, plunderstrongs. You're going to arm them to the teeth. Cursed Kayo is 260,000, and I'm sorry, Swash. This is my new favorite plunder long. What can I say? I have a soft spot for white beards and foosh blue. It's just sweet nothings to my ear. Well, I guess to my eyes. Sweet nothings to my eyeballs. But Swash may drop a few more rungs on the ladder because there's also Cursed Nofrag, and this. <laughs> This just takes the plunder strong to a whole new level. I mean, this is after Typhoon. Just imagine being a plunder along with these two to your back. <laughs> there ain't nobody messing with you. Oh, you're gonna give us trouble, eh? Well, talk to my compadres. They also updated the big stretch goal graphic with silhouettes for Tinkers, Fawns, and Shaman. It's the last push. Let's do this. We recently got a little tease for the Bandai SH Figuarts THE Batman. THE Batman. It's 2022. This week we get a full reveal, but it's... <laughs> It's kind of an odd rollout. It's not the usual fanfare from the import sites. I found this on some domestics, and then digging for pictures was kind of tough too. Sometimes Bandai seems to target the US crowd specifically, and this may be one of those cases, or I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> maybe we'll see them find it. Maybe I missed a release of some kind. Maybe I missed some press, some announcements. Been a weird week. But as far as the figure goes, there's not any big surprises. It's the Batman. Comes with the uh, assortment of hands. Comes with the weapons. I do like the swappable chest piece to make it look like he's pulled the bat blade out of it. So it's an empty slot. And looking at the unmasked head, I can't help but think that this may be the top so far from unmasked heads we've seen from other companies. Oh, but what about Hot Toys? What about them? Even my dogs think, nope, don't bring up Hot Toys on this channel. Something that does jump out at me here is the plastic cape shoulder piece. I mean, there's obviously a fabric cape, but it's shoved up under there in the back somehow. And I get it. Sometimes that fabric up on top can get unruly. It, it sticks up and I think I've had that problem with a past Figuarts Batman, where it just would not lay down. So this is visually pleasing, but how is it going to affect the arm movement? Not a lot of pictures of his hand above his head. There's this one, but even that's kind of up and out, kind of angled. You see me nearly fall over? No back shots either, so we don't see the full transition from kind of shiny plastic to unshiny cloth. But that's just me nitpicking. Been looking at the pictures way too long this week. If you didn't care for the Mezco or the McFarland, this may be right up your crime alley. <laughs> and I think I've made that joke before, but 
It works, right? I mean, it's right there. Around $90 due out in August, although the domestic sites have it hitting in October. That's coming out overseas and then do 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 put it on a boat, go across the ocean. Bleh. Sticking with DC, Metacom put up a little Moff X tease as I was walking in here and, and who could it be? Now I've skipped this series so far, but I'll admit the Mattel DC Universe Classic Steel is one of my favorite figures from that collection. In fact, it's the one that got me into it for the most part. So when they reveal the full on of this, will I be tempted? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Hmm. McFarlane Toys is also getting down with the DC teases this week with what looks to be their DC Multiverse Blackest Night Batman. This is a pretty cool picture, the setup and everything, but if you think about it behind the scenes, that's just Batman's arms shoved in some grass, dirt stuff. But hey, that's okay. It's a nice tease. They're not showing off the whole figure. It's just like, oh, what is that? Oh, ooh. And surprisingly, we're seeing this before we saw the actual figure leaked elsewhere, like walmart.com or something. This makes me interested in seeing what the actual figure looks like. And I know there's been leaks and the rest of the line, atrocities. <laughs> One step at a time, boys. That's not all for McFarlane this week, though. They also revealed their Mortal Kombat Nightwolf. I may be wrong about this, because I wouldn't put it past myself to mislabel a folder, put the pictures in the wrong place, misspell Mortal Kombat, but it looks like we haven't had any noteworthy news on the Mortal Kombat front since August of 2021. Either way, the silence is broken. Nightwolf. If you're into the line, this looks like a good addition. I say it like that because you know the drill. I don't know a lot about Mortal Kombat past the big main players, which I can also say about Power Rangers, which is unfortunate for y'all having to <laughs> watch me stumble through this. But as promised, Super 7 has revealed their Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Go, go, ultimate! I already talked about this last week. You have to add an extra syllable to get it into the theme song. And why am I looking up here still? Is the music right there? Nope. But they revealed the full-on Wave 3. I will pat myself on the back, though, because I did correctly guess that the Black and Blue Rangers would be in this wave. I used some uh, <clears throat> pretty complex algorithms and probability matrices to arrive at that conclusion. <laughs> you just wouldn't understand. Or maybe it was pure and simple process of elimination, but I can't give away all my secrets. Besides the two Rangers, there's also the Dino Megazord, and most of the conversation I've seen about that this week is whether or not the hands are the correct color. Using those same advanced processes, solve for X, carry the knot, adjust for the full moon. I, I can only surmise that this is perfect otherwise. Finster, I only know this character because of the Hasbro Lightning Collection release, and I only remember that because I plan on using that body for a Marvel Comics Puppet Master. Once you get the plastic involved and customization, then it's rich. My brain absorbs that, but when it comes to actual names and dates, it's... it's... <laughs> I didn't realize the tree-like qualities until I saw the Super 7 pictures. Please, someone tell me that he is made out of wood and it kind of flips the script on the age-old puppet thing. Next up, as teased, there's Lord Zed. And this is just one of those designs that you can't help liking, even if you're not into Power Rangers. It's a big helmeted guy with exposed muscle and IV tubes running all over the place because you have to hydrate. That's just science. It pictures two heads, but I can't find any difference between the two. It's listed as one of them having Z-Vision, and I guess if you look real close, one of them has a lighter red to the visor. So maybe the paint's different. Maybe it's light piping. Maybe I could make a more educated guess if I knew what the hell Z-Vision was. Z! He can only see Zs. The rest of the alphabet blind. And then finally, Lord Zed can't lord it up unless he's sitting on a throne. Nice thing about this, it's a separate purchase. So you can either buy both or just one if you need one or the other. And that works even better if you're into the Hasbro line, you can buy a throne for your Lord Zed over there. He may be kind of lost within the size of it, but it's still a Lord Zed throne. That's $45. The rest of the figures are the standard $55, except for the Megazord, who is $65. And if that wasn't enough, Super 7 also hit us with a Silverhawks tease. And I know that probably should have been with the rest of the teases a minute ago, but they're dropping them. I haven't had time to do a lot of organization. I have filled the segues today. And yep, you remember correctly, I know even less about Silverhawks than I do Power Rangers or a lot of the other lines I just kind of stumble through. So to me, looking at this picture, my first thought was, are they trying to put pepper in my salad? As always, Super 7 teases one week, they show the pictures the next week. Oh damn it, Four Horsemen. 
Why are your designs so tempting? Tempting because I've managed to avoid buying any legions so far. Not because I didn't want them, but you know how things are. Wallets are tight. I haven't had a chance to partake. Plus, I can't keep up with all the releases. I think I missed the All-Star Wave. At some point, I saw someone talking about it as they showed Cosmic Legions Wave 2. Here's a drop, there's a drop, everywhere's a drop drop. But I do love to window shop, and when I do see something, you know I gotta talk about it. Which leads to me whew, trying to pronounce these just scrabbled tile mixed up pile of word names. They continue the Science Prison Fight Club theme with the mm, Havalkatar Book 2 Grave Knight. To start off, the Gravekeeper, that's another variation of the prison guards with heavy trooper builder flair, like heads, helmets, armors, and weapons. Uh, yes, there's gonna be a lot of reading. Uh, bear with me. Uh, yes, Cripidion? Cripidion. Cripidion. This is a Greyborn with a very familiar alien aesthetic to it, but it doesn't look out of place with the rest of the crew. Novian Lean <laughs> swerves into a reptile realm while Canix Vol brings the cybernetics. And the beef. Oh, he's showing off all the muscle. But my favorite is, oh my god, Mbira Jmgira. Mbira Jmgira. Now come on, you cannot tell me that you didn't take letter-shaped magnets and just toss them across the room at a refrigerator and thought, well, whatever stuck, that's what we're naming this character. Byra Magira, Bira Magira, Mbira Jimgira. It's the figure that jumps out at me, not her name. And there, the greens and the orange, very striking. The translucent plastic is a nice effect. And then the head is actually a scorpion tail. I mean, that's just awesome. And then if you need some extra arms for your characters, there's the weapons pack. $37 a piece, except for Vol. He's got a couple of inches on the rest of the characters, so that means he's 47 and then the grave keepers come with all that gear, so that pushes it up to 60. But if you're thrifty and wanna save $40, there's an all-in package that includes everything, including the weapons for 200 bucks, which seems like a hell of a deal for what you're getting here. Last weekend, as soon as I posted the weekly, you know how it goes, NECA teased their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon Turtle Van, and then Turtle Tuesday rolled around, they swapped out their two-week windows on the NECA online site, and this went up for pre-order. This definitely brings on the warm fuzzies if you were into the cartoon, but from what I've seen, it apparently doesn't hold up to close scrutiny when compared to the animation. We can probably chalk that up to a few things. One, <laughs> it was the Turtles cartoon. That was an ever-changing blob of van parts. Take that and try to translate it into the real world into a smaller scale that is compatible with Turtle figures that you've already released. That's on top of making parts and pieces operate in reality <laughs> that was when it's only based on a cartoon like opening doors and fitting those figures inside but i think the biggest contention is the back end that lovely turtle hump even to me who hasn't watched the cartoon since it originally aired i can tell that that's kind of a really big cut but again you're taking the figures you got to fit them in the back you got to fit them in the sides you got to open the door put them in it was probably a concession to try to keep the actual cost down. Make it as small as possible, but make it fit everything. But whoever thought in 2022 we'd be talking about different options for the turtle van. There's the Super 7, there's the third party, now there's this. So if this doesn't tickle your fancy, you can just go elsewhere and get your fancy tickled. It's weird when you say it backwards, isn't it? $250 will release in the future. Let's swing back around to last week's announcement of the Hasbro Marvel Legends Disney Plus Moon Knight, because I, I, like some of these things that I've already talked about, it popped up as I was walking in here, so I didn't get to fine tooth comb it. Initial reaction, oh, so damn sweet. And it still is, don't get me wrong. Just because I'm gonna point out some inaccuracies doesn't mean I'm not excited about it. In order to reveal an action figure at the same time as the show debuts, and as we always talk about, Hasbro's gotta work with initial concept art or preliminary pictures, images. So yeah, it's not perfect. The biggest offender being that one strap of mummy gauze that's not going up over the bridge of the nose. Like I said, I am still down for this figure because, and I know this doesn't tickle a lot of your fancies, but I may use this as my comic book, Moon Knight. Oh, oh, oh. Or just a Moon Knight. It's a cool looking toy. <laughs> what can I say? I originally planned for that to lead right into Marvel.com's tease of the Marvel Legends Mr. Knight that they kind of snuck up into the header image of the Moon Knight announcements. And I had zoomed in and, oh, this, and look at that, and, 
oh, they tried to get us. But then, again, right as I was walking in here, Hasbro showed off the actual Marvel Legends Moon Knight, Mr. Knight from Moon Knight, Disney Plus, Moon Knight. Veeves and I compared the little pictures to some of the suited bodies we had laying around, and I do think those are Coulson arms, and maybe the Coulson torso under the new jacket overlay with the vest piece in between. Also new head, new shoes, I'm on the fence about the legs. I can't find any matching wrinkles on any of my figures, plus these look more filled out for the rest of the suit. With Coulson and some of the others, it always seemed like really skinny legs coming down. These bulkier look better with the rest of the figure. But this is a digital render. I wanna see it in actual prototype, actual plastic form before I start going, I need more regular dudes in plain clothes. Hasbro also said that this and Moon Knight will go up for pre-order April 12th and be part of that what if Ultron wave. Moon Knight wasn't shown with an Ultron piece though. Mr. Knight was, so I think the general consensus is that Moon Knight's gonna be the double pack and not come with a piece. And then finally, there was the Hasbro Star Wars Fan First Wednesday, which gave us new Black Series reveals. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, but if you want something a little more long-winded, I did do a ramble earlier in the week. We're just gonna keep this quick and dirty today. <laughs> and even then, it's probably not gonna be as quick and as dirty as advertised. Quick and dirty fancy tickling. Rogue One Saw Gerrera is a deluxe release, which may or may not be appropriate, depending on your point of view on action figures and their prices. Now in the ramble, I said that this feels more appropriate as a deluxe figure than other deluxes that we've gotten so far. It's a slightly larger figure, nice paint apps, less likely to be reused, but that was before I remembered Younger Saw with the bald head. That would have been a cool addition to this to make it feel even more deluxe-y, but I still stand by this feeling more deluxe than the Boba Fett's we've been getting. Then, GameStop's making a mad dash to finish off the Republic Commando crew with their exclusive gaming great, Sev. And me saying finishing off the Republic Commando crew, again, it, it comes down to your personal hardcoreness when it comes to Republic Commando. Someone like me who was never into it and saw more of them on the Bad Batch than I saw in any video game, I'm kind of good with this. But like I said Wednesday, if it had been a more unique sculpt, bigger, bulkier, dirtier, I'd be even more interested. Something I forgot Wednesday, but I've mentioned before though, I, it seems weird that Hasbro wouldn't give a unique sculpt to the Republic Commandos, knowing that reuse would be imminent. They could get four releases out of one body with just minor tweaks. But as is, they're getting six reuses out of the Bad Batch armor, so. I don't know. For the publishing program side of things, where they pull designs from comic books and novels and such, they started off with Infinity's Darth Vader. Looking at this more, I'm thinking that this is the Empire Strikes Back Darth Vader, the last one we saw because of the thinner switches on the chest box. Still think they should have went with a blue lightsaber though. That would have been... Mm. Basically, it is just Darth Vader in bright white. I've wanted this comic book adventure gear Leia for a while now. Even though I haven't read this specific series, I've seen the covers and I am making my way through the comics. Hell, I've even had a custom planned using the same recipe Hasbro's using. Hoth base body, new boots, new gloves. I, I would have went with the vest look that we see sometimes, but Hasbro went with the neck quilt. I didn't realize that the cape thing was actually reused from the episode two Padme. Kind of wish the hair matched the comics though with the more body and waviness. But I am most excited about Sergeant Creel because that is exactly where I am in the comic series. I am late to the party with my first read through, but it was fresh on my brain, which means instant plastic gratification. It was like, hey, I kind of like this in action. Holy shit. He did get a new torso and limb pouches to complete the look to make it more accurate. But more than that, he's a stormtrooper with a lightsaber. That's like a double whammy on my wallet. Worse, this makes me want the rest of Task Force 99. I understand they don't have as high a profile as the Bad Batch, so... I'm doubting it. I feel pretty secure in starting customs of the rest of Scar Squadron. I'm gonna need more Stormtroopers, I guess. For the pipeline reveals, which is essentially just showing a picture of what we're gonna get in the future, there's a mainline Grogu, who I'm hoping will come with enough stuff to justify the price of a mainline release. And then Mandalorian season one, Migs Mayfield. This is the one I was waiting for. I like the Trooper disguise one. This is the one I want. He's gonna go up with zero, and then I can just sit back hope for the rest of the jailbreak crew. All the links are in the description. And that's it for this week. <laughs> like we already talked about way back, uh, it's probably not. There's stuff being shown right now, stuff gonna be shown over the weekend. 
again, we'll swing back around next week. If you want to see any of these pictures up close without me all, hmm, there's also latitude and longitude, gravitational pull. How does this affect collectors? Whatever. I put it in square. Come around, divide by X and Y. I'll be posting all of that, plus links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. Hasbro also announced a Fan First Tuesday for both Transformers and Power Rangers, and I'm just realizing that's April 12th. That's the same day that the Moon Knights go for pre-order. Ooh, Marvel team, you can't get this yellow. So I'll be stumbling through Power Rangers and talking Transformers next week. And with Transformers, I've kind of bowed out. I, I've gotten a lot of what I wanted, but I've started skipping some, mostly because of the budget. Transformers is high on nostalgia for me, but not high on actually displaying or playing with the toys, you know? There's other stuff that I want to buy. And with prices going up, that's something I didn't touch on in the Star Wars. Those damn publishing things are like 28 bucks. So in order to buy those, I'm not gonna buy just the <laughs> looky-loo window things. Plus I was denied a blaster. I found it on the shelf at Walmart several months ago. And when I went to the register and scanned it, it said not allowed or, or see a salesperson or something. So they came over and I was like, hey, I would like to buy this toy. You cannot buy this toy. I just want the toy. Never. Actually, it went like this. Uh, this didn't scan. Oh, it looks like it's not in the system. Uh, uh can it be in the system? Nope. Cool. And I walked away. Because even at that time, Transformers was my leave it to fate. If I saw it on the shelf, I'd grab it. But with the budget and everything. Since then, I haven't even... Well, I still look, and I haven't seen another blaster. So it was fate. Right. I'm just leaving it to that. But I can still talk about it. <laughs> if you enjoyed this Woosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com, wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the Foosh. And Walmart actually shipped out the Clone Wars Mace Windu, which is super surprising. With pre-orders being last July, we expected some things to mess up because it's Walmart. Now I haven't been keeping track of how everybody else's orders are going, but I did get Grievous, I got the Ark Trooper, and I got Mace. So I'll probably take a look at those next week maybe.